Hey guys. Okay, so I'm going to show you quick how to do a customer profile form. So I actually did a whole video on this um, and then I decided to redo it because I had to figure a few things out for myself, um, which is why I'm trying to save you guys the steps. So I made my video or I made my um, form back in April when I started this whole thing and there was a bunch of stuff that I looked up. I looked it up on YouTube. You can find things on Google. Um, and I did everything myself, which is what you always want to do to be a good business uh, woman is to be resourceful, right? But I'm going to save you a couple steps just so you don't have to do all of that because I reminded myself how I got a little frustrated then um, while I was trying to reteach myself how to do it so I could show you. And look, I'm looking up at like the video here and the camera here, so sorry. But I wanted to show you how to do this. So. I made a Google account um, and you go to drive.google.com and that is where you can make your um, customer profile forms and spreadsheets to keep track of your customers' orders and so on. So just know that you can make a customer profile form to collect um, the, the customers' names and their email and their address so you can ship to them their email so you can invoice them um, and you can put all that in, but it cannot include um, their selection for their order. So it can't say like a, a question that says, I want dark pink um, lip sense. Uh, and that's because of Senegin's compliance rules. The only way that you can have them directly order and not through you is to um, have a Senate site through Senegin's. So you can put one of these forms in your Facebook profile or in your Facebook store, however you want to do it. Um, and I think it's really resourceful so you're not having to message them and ask them their email and their, their address and everything. It just cannot have a place to order. So this is what mine looks like. Um, this is the edited, or you know, like the, the part where I can edit it. And anything that you do, like if I were to edit this right now, it will say saved up here and it will automatically update everywhere that I have it posted. So I just have it posted in my Facebook um, group so that my customers can use it. So if I edit, edited this right now, it would edit it there at the same time. It's a live document, just so you understand how that works. So you're gonna go to Drive and you're gonna go to New. Um, and I'm gonna say a new, go to More, New Google Form, okay? So you can change the color here. You're gonna go to Color Palette, you can change the color. Don't spend too much time on all this because it doesn't matter that much. I uploaded like a picture of lips and stuff, but you don't have to do that. You could just do like pink, okay? Um, and it makes a theme for the whole thing. And then you're going to name it so you can put customer profile. And you also want to name it here, although it, when you click it, it automatically does it for you. Instead of saying unnamed, it'll name it so you know where it is. And see, it says all changes saved in Drive, so they're automatically saved. So then you're going to put a description and I had written, thank you so much for your order and for supporting my business. I will use this form to collect your information so I can invoice you and get you your lippy goodies. So you'll fill in your description and then you're going to start doing your questions. So I wanted them to put their name um, and it automatically says, okay, it's a short answer, which means they'll be able to write just the short answer here. And you want to click required because that means that they have to fill out that question to move on. Um, or to, you know to end the form. So then you're going to do add a question, and you're going to do email or however you want to do this, guys. But then they'll fill it in, and you're going to click required, and then you would put address. So you could put like street, um, and then you could put um, city, you know, and so on. So you're going to keep going, get the whole address information, and then you would um, you can also do multiple choice questions. So say you want to say shipping preference you could have pickup and you could put in parentheses like local to albany or wherever you live um, um, and then you could also put slash delivery if you're willing to deliver to them i i bring it to people that i work with so i consider that as one of the options and then you can say add another option is shipping and you're going to want to say the price that you charge. I just charge a flat rate shipping. So um, I use, oh, excuse me, I have to pause this and go help get my plumber one second. Hold on. I'll pause. I have a plumber downstairs working while I'm making this video. There we go. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to run downstairs. So I think, I don't remember where I left off, but I think I was saying that I use the USPS first class mail, um, which is, they just upped it to $3 
to ship anything under, I think it's four ounces. So basically that's a collection in two colors or anything less than that. One lip sense color, just a collection, whatever. It'll be $3. So I charge three fifty dollars um, to include like my bubble mailers that I get on Amazon and my business card and the packing materials basically. So I put that option there. Some people do um, shipping based on like the weight or whatever you could say like one item is three dollars a collection is 350 and skincare purchase is 450 or something if it's going to be heavier however you want to do it um, so then you can put required and keep on moving down the list so um one of the things i'll show you i do on my form is i make these optional questions of would you be interested in hosting a party and would you be interested in a wholesale membership um, and any comments or feedback that you have so the other thing I want to show you, um, well, first of all, how to save this. So like I was saying, it saves automatically. And this is what I had to go look up so I could redo my video because I couldn't remember that it saved automatically. So it does that. Um, and then you can click responses. So if anyone fills it out, um, sorry, I'm getting text. <laughs> um, so if anyone fills out your form, you can select to get an email response. So you're going to click responses. Um, it, and you would click um, get email notifications and they'll go to your email and they'll tell you that you have a response. But because you're not using it as an actual order form, it's just a profile, customer profile form, you don't even need to do this if you don't want because the people will be messaging you or commenting on your photo albums and telling you what they want. So you know there's an order pending um, because they let you know and then you're gonna refer them to your form to fill out. Um, and so you wanna select a response destination. So you're gonna select that and you're gonna say create a new spreadsheet. Now, if you already had a spreadsheet that you wanted to compile um, information from a few different forms all in one, you could select an existing one, but I'm gonna say create a new one, and it's gonna call it the name of your form that you called it, customer profile, and it's gonna say responses. So you'll say create, excuse me, and then we'll look over here, and it's going to come up here. Let's see where it just go. Um, here custom profile responses, because I already have one up here. Um, so I'll just show you the new one that I made. So this is basically a spreadsheet, kind of like Excel if you have Windows, um, but it's this is done by Google Drive. So anything that comes up here, or any changes you make here will automatically save. And again, you can access them from any other computer or any other, um, from your phone. I have the app on my phone and I just download the Google Sheets app and then I can um, access my forms wherever I am. If someone places an order while I'm not home and I wanna enter it right away, or if I wanna update something, or if I wanna check what someone owes me when I see them in person. Um, but anyways, it's going to fill out, um, it would put the timestamp of when they did it, their name, email, you know, all the things that you made questions for, it'll automatically fill into this form. Now, one thing that you might want to add is after I put, um, after their name, email, street, city, I add what they ordered. So again, you can't have them order it directly, but they told you in a message they were getting dark pink. So you could say, um, you right click and do insert one to the right. You can name it and I would put order and then so say it was, say Susie's name popped up here, okay? Because um, this all autofills. Then in order, they're gonna say she got dark pink. And then I'm also gonna add a row or a column, I guess. Oops. Insert one to the right and call it price. So dark pink lip sense is $25 and I include tax on my form so I know what I am invoicing them and it's $27 then, including tax. Um, there will be another video about that because remember you guys can't actually call it tax because you're paying tax to um, percentages who remits it to your state. So you're just doing a tax reimbursement. Some people call it handling. You ask me if you have a question about that. Um, so anyway, so it's gonna populate here. Now these two columns will stay here even, even though when someone fills out the form, it's gonna fill out, I can't point, um, it's gonna fill out name, email, street, city, every time all the things that are in your form, those will fill out. These ones won't because you added them, but they will stay so that on every single person's, like all these different people here, you can type in what they got. So some the next person gets a collection, you could say apple cider collection, and it's 59.40 including tax. And then, 
Um, I won't show you this now, but basically you could go in here and you could insert, um, you can look this all up yourself, but you can insert a function. I don't remember, is this where it is? Oh yeah, that's where it is, I was looking for it earlier. So you can insert a function. So I put sum and then I would click this through here. So like all of the ones I have so far, and then, whoopsie, I unclicked it all in here, through here, and press enter. And now it's gonna add that all up. So that will tell you everything that you have in so far in your form. So like all these people ordered, and that's your, your total. Say you did this for a party. Um, but I just keep an ongoing list. So let me just move this down here so I don't show you any people's information. You're gonna see my new, <laughs> newborn baby's photo and her bum. <laughs> um, and move it down here. So I can show you my customer profile. Let's see, where is it? Here. Um, I just don't want to give you everyone's information on here. Um, so sorry, it's way down here, but you can see. So I have, so automatically the form fills out timestamp, name, email, street address, city, state, zip code, whatever. So I wrote in product selected, and that's where they're putting the colors that they got. Oh, and actually this one form is not filled. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, the product selected, so I would type in, she got the Sherberry collection. Was there a discount? Um, remember, side note, that you can't discount any more than 15%. I almost never, ever discount our products, but if they won something in a giveaway, like they did a, a game and they were the winner for 10% off, I'd put it there, so I remind myself. Then I put the total cost um, after the discount, including tax. And then this auto fills from my form, the payment method, they chose um, method of delivery, and then would you be interested for the party? Would you be interested in being a distributor? Um, and then here's the comments one. And then I made, again, I, I right clicked and I added these columns for invoiced, paid, and delivered. So I can put a little, yes, she was invoiced. And then yes, she paid. And yes, she was. I delivered it to her. And then I move it to another form that I have um, called paid and delivered. So this one I created in Google Docs um, on my own, like I didn't populate it from the form, I just made it. And I copy pasted the same whole top row so that it matched. And then I always just say, okay, so, oops, I'm sorry. So let's say this person already ordered and she already paid and delivered it. I would copy it, copy this row, control C. And then I would go to my paid and delivered and I would just, you know, put an empty, on an empty line um, paste and it would put that whole row in. So now I would delete it from here. This is confusing for you to see, I'm sorry. Basically I would delete it from here and only store it in my paid and delivered form so that I can keep track still over time how much I have charged people. Um, so I keep it for tax purposes and I keep it for um, having a good idea of how much I've spent. So I have a separate credit card um, percentage and just so I see everything that I've ordered from Senegents and the total cost um, per month that I spend on product. And then I have th these forms um, with totals to show me how much I've collected money and then I subtract them and I know my profit for the month. Um, and if you're ordering at the 50% discount, then you almost have a 50% profit just minus your expenses. So you have a couple of shipping fees from Senegents and um, whatever incidentals, if you did any prizes or anything, then those are will be subtracted from that as well. So I'm getting into side notes, but let me go back to here. So this is that form I was telling you. Again, you can add your sum. So when you're in your Google Drive, you're going to have all the different things. So the, the form that we just made is right here, and I want to share it, okay? So let's go to it. So I'm going to click up here. Let's move that. I'm going to click Send, and then I'm going to click this little link, and I'm going to, you can shorten it if you want. And then you're going to copy this and that's why this is the link that you're going to go paste into your store. So on Facebook, if you're doing it in your group, you just make it as if you're making a post. Um, you copy this link and paste it right in and write a little description like, please fill this out if you're a new customer. Um, and that way I can invoice you and get you your, your lipstick, uh, however you want to word it. And then that's it. So anytime you make changes to the document, it'll automatically upload to Facebook or wherever you have it pasted. That's how you share it. So I told you how to um, select the destination. That's how you make a sheet. And then I, um, I told you how to share it. So you go to send again, and you go to the little link, and you save this link, and that's how you send it. So close this, and close this, 
and then go back to my drive again, just so you can see. So they're all laid out. So these are the ones I always use my customer profile, my paid and delivered. That's where I transfer everything that's already shipped and paid for it to make this spreadsheet. Um, I also keep one that just keeps track of um, like any trades I do, which we really don't trade anymore. And um, any products I open for myself, because those are business expenses that you can use as tax write-offs. And then there's the form that I use. And I keep like a wish list as well. If there's any colors out of stock and my customers want it, I made a spreadsheet for that as well. So if you have questions about it, let me know. But you can also, again, use Google and YouTube as resources for all of this. That's how I figured out how to do everything that I did here. And hopefully that was helpful. Bye.